to the new developments near St. Louis, Missouri this evening after the police shooting of an unarmed teenager. Police using tear gas for a third night in a row overnight. This demonstrator throwing a canister back. Tensions have been high all week long a community demanding answers. And this evening, what they're now revealing about the officer in that car, his condition. ABC Steve Osinsami is there again tonight. Late this evening, the protests continue down the streets of Ferguson. They were demanding answers in the police shooting of that unarmed teenager at the center of this growing movement. The city is so torn, the police chief scheduled to meet with the victim's family tomorrow. With death threats coming in daily, police refused to identify the officer who gunned down 18-year-old Michael Brown just two days before he should have started college. And if it comes down to a lawsuit, police promised to appeal the issue to the highest court. They argue there was a fight at the scene and today told us the officer was injured in the scuffle and had to be treated at a hospital. His face was swollen, so he'd obviously uh, um, been hit or punched or something like that. Tear gas has been filling the air and bullets are lighting up the night, even shooting at police helicopters. The FAA is so concerned they've issued a no-fly zone covering the entire city. Today we met Brandon Lee, a student and photographer who says the young people clashing with police aren't thugs, that this is civil disobedience. Come on. He asked us to show these pictures of people cleaning the streets. I understand where those brothers are coming from that's doing the looting and robbing. This country is, it's, come on, dude, just look on, look on the news. No jobs, all of us in prison. To prevent scenes like this, the city is asking people who live here to march and protest during daylight hours. But families here tell us they should be able to demonstrate whenever they'd like. 